Okay, so I said I wasn't going to be making DBD content for YouTube. And for the most part, that remains true. However, I heard this video was posted, so I thought I would make uh, an exception here because while I haven't seen this video, I have a strong suspicion that Ots Darva is going to say some things that I've been feeling for a while when it comes to I'll, I'll say Dead by Daylight, but more so like the community and, and stuff, which is why I've stepped back a lot from this game. So I kind of want to see what Ots has to say here and uh give my one two pennies on it. Hello friends, this is Ots and yesterday the developers of DVD held a Q&A session at Reddit where they answer questions from the community. That's a lie, Ots. We both know it because I read those questions and I read those answers. They didn't say poop. They didn't say nothing. They gave political politician work around non-answer answers. Lies. Lies, Ots. Lies. I followed it really closely and I was very disappointed. Um, this video is not going to be a summary of everything that happened. You'll mm -hmm. find one down below if you want to see the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, instead, I'm going to nitpick a few other posts to show you what I found so disappointing. Yep. In one word, it's just ambition. There's just no ambition where whatever gameplay is concerned. Now, about some of the things that the developers talk about, such as skins, yeah, they tell us, oh, we're porting skins from DVD Mobile. Yes, we're creating this new system where you're going to be able to upgrade your skins from the Rift. That's kind of like what Fortnite did, where you get a costume or a skin and it gets progressively cooler, I guess. Yep. So in those in those regards, the, the game is ambitious, you know, obviously in their release. Well, that's because let's, let's call a spade a spade here by incentivizing like a cosmetic that people can buy through other at like the shop or through a rift pass whatever that then can be upgraded not only does it incentivize people spending more money in the game but it incentivizes them to keep playing therefore buffing those steam hours or playstation hours whatever so that's all tied to them sweet sweet dollars state for new content the game is very ambitious but in polishing gameplay and polishing the already existing experience and in things other than events and stuff that's where things slow down very dramatically so this is one that i've asked the developers to do for a very long time in behalf of the on behalf of the dvd tournament organizer community the... and it is the question there we go sorry the space bar wasn't letting me pause for some reason um can you imagine if they actually added a free cam into custom lobbies do you know how useful that would have been for like the streamer bowl for example if we had actual customization in custom lobbies after what seven and a half years this game's been out enough are there plans to update custom lobbies uh give more options more spectator lots free cam anything at all and oh, oh, they oh, say this oh. has been considered by the team Hello, good sir for tournament reasons but they're not going to be arriving in the game anytime soon due to priority reasons i do think that if this game was more watchable that would be really nice. Anytime I've hold events or I've witnessed or watch events from other people, there's things like this going on, like spectator bugs, yep. jittery cameras, problems that result in teams having to reset and, and tournament organizers wasting time. It makes watching DVD less fun. Uh, yep. But I understand it's a low priority. It's a very small percentage of the player base. So, you know, fair enough. I mean, like it is as great as it would be to have custom events like tournaments or charity events whatever they are a minority because most people spend their times in pubs so like he's not wrong in saying it's not a high priority but then i asked a question myself that i thought was actually quite important for a big part of the player base which was the following when stranger things came back the perks that were common now are no longer common and they're licensed perks. So that means that a new player, for example, doesn't have Jolt, doesn't have Better Together, doesn't have some perks that were honestly really, really nice. So I ask, are there any plans to rework or improve the current pool of common perks? Um, the common perks are, of course, Resilience. They are Spice from the Shadow, Sloppy Butcher. Oh, your non-DLC perks. All those perks. Are there any plans to improve them? Now, I didn't ask if they would make new ones. But they still answer that. They say, this is something we were discussing yesterday. Right now, we have no immediate plans to introduce new general perks. 
fine, completely fine. New killers are also up against new survivors, so gen regression perks are not necessarily needed at this level when players are learning to play the game. And the base character perks reflect this. Wait. Uh, right now we have no media plans to introduce new general perks. New killers are also up against new survivors, so gen regression perks are not necessarily needed at this level when players are learning to play the game. I kind of disagree with that i think i'm assuming they're talking about new people but when you're a new killer your chases are going to take even longer because you don't have like the whole mind game and the looping and all that down yet yes of course you're probably going to run into survivors who aren't as strong loopers as well but I, 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 like, I personally feel in my 4,000 plus hours experience, obviously not when you get like the, 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 the sweat squads who are trying to do five gens in two and a half minutes. But like in an average game, there's a reason why I started running, uh, before my DBD break, non slowdown builds, like, you know, aura builds or randomized builds from chat or whatever, build requests because as I got more comfortable with the game, my chases were faster. Therefore, gen regression perks weren't as necessary. So I don't really agree with that. And judging by the negative 66 down votes, a lot of other people did not as well. This is uh, this is where my problems begin. This is such a lack of, of ambition. It is such a, well, we don't really need to make it better because I mean, you can tell by the amount of uh, downvotes and the very, <laughs> very um, My man. reasonable reply by the next user that people did not like this. If you didn't catch it, uh, as I said, some perks are no longer uh, common and these perks are now gone. These are the common perks that both sides have access to. Uh, Insidious, Shattered, Iron Grass, Unrelenting, Deerstalker, Premonition, Spine... Uh, wait, no. That's Spine Chill. Pre premonition? Which one's this? I don't know what that is. Adrenaline. Yeah, none of these... Oh, that's Resilience. Oh. Uh, none of these are... There are zero slowdowns. Oh, is it... This is not happening? Oh, okay. Ban everyone who said Resilience. We can see them over here on the chat so caught in 4k yeah ban the people who said resilience please thanks the only like i and i'm like when i say these are slowdowns i'm like really stretching because they're not slowdowns sloppy butcher slows down healing but not gens of course and then to like slow down end game again saying it very loosely you got no ed these are all the common perks they don't have any gen perks when i kind of feel like new people need it to help them like you know actually learn killer stuff early in the game especially on the killer side we have at least six or seven perks that are generally borderline useless from this list i only see four perks that are worth running uh, and some of them are even hard to use for beginners or, or hard to use on some killers. So like the fact that the developers think that these perks are fine for beginners and that base perks reflect this. The only thing this reflects is that these perks are really, really horribly designed. Some of them and not suitable for beginners. Some yeah. of the best beginner perks are locked behind paywall yep. or, or locked behind charts. It's true that some of the killers in the future will be easier to unlock, but I, I still found this question a little bit lacking in any kind of ambition i would have loved to instead of reading this be like you know what that is a great point we are going to redesign perks we're going to swap some things around so that beginners have a great experience and they have every tool they need to learn the amazing world of that by daylight and we'll mm -hmm. be sure to keep that in mind you know that would have been a great answer i would have loved to say that but no we don't get that no no, Next I up, do you plan for survivors to be able to inspect other survivor builds before the game starts? I find this to be an incredibly important feature, and the developers say 
This is something we've also thought about, but we are currently restricted due to flexibility in the lobby screens. We're updating these old screens gradually, and you should see some improvements over the next years. Years, plural, years. How is there no flexibility just to put four tiny icons either below, above the survivors, whatever? I mean, you guys, in some lobbies, the was it the the killer will have the four perks showing in that diamond like right above me if this was the lobby screen it shows up for some people i still don't have it for some reason but why can't you just do like a small version of that where even if they had to make it small where it could be maybe difficult to see what the icons are just hover over it and the perk description will pop up or something but the, currently we should due to flexibility in the lobby screens i I, I don't understand that at all. That doesn't make sense. I'm not saying programming is easy, but I, I, I feel like this wouldn't require a whole brand new custom new lobby scene to make. Also, they update their lobbies every time with new DLCs. Smiley face. This, uh, I, I, I share the sentiment. Years? I didn't what even mean? I didn't even see that before I started that. <laughs> I didn't even see that. <laughs> Years. Dead by Daylight Mobile. This is a screenshot from a video recorded. Okay, I didn't I haven't seen this image before, but this is kind of like a version of what I'm talking about. Something like this. Move things around a little bit. Boom. There you go. The two years ago. More than two years ago, Dead by Daylight Mobile already had a feature to see your teammates. Off, uh, out, not off it, sorry. Uh, instead of offering show loadouts during loading screens, well, the idea of having the loadouts in the lobby is so that people can kind of synergize and customize builds. So I'm just going to use a random perk here. So four people don't end up bringing wake up when maybe only one person, two people need it or whatever. They're, all, they're always trying to bridge the gap between Swift and solo queue because the closer they are sorry the closer they are uh in balance i say that loosely it's dbd the more they can do with the rest of the game so if people are able to synergize builds more it gives them more freedom like tcm also you get to see the icon image in lobby stream well there you go it's totally doable so i don't understand why this takes years to do my friends who are new to this game always complain that DVD feels pay to play. And I agree after Stranger Things come back. Yeah. I mean, most what what meta perks aren't locked behind DLC now. Uh, Pain Res DLC. Pop DLC. Uh, what are some of the meta survivor stuff? I'm assuming Buckle Up and For the People is DLC. Resilience is base. Resilience is part of the base game. Adrenaline is also part of the base game. Adrenaline is a mag perk. I forget which one. Resilience is just a general perk, so they're not locked behind DLCs. But yeah, I feel like most of the meta ones are... If not all the meta ones are DLC. Um, it is paid loadouts. to load. I understand that you cannot just put this on a DVD lobby, but it could come up on a DVD loading screen. And it could have an option thing so that you don't share your loadout if you don't want to, if people want to play with their private loadouts. Something like this should not be this difficult to implement. The fact that they are happy to say that this is coming in. I get what he, I get what you're both saying, chat and aughts, about them being in loading screens because it would be easier. I just feel like if it was in an actual lobby, there's more the players can actually do with it because by the time you're loading into the game, it's too late. Sure, you can make the argument, well, okay, well, I now both myself and the lori have wake up so if lori gets the door first then you know i don't have to push her off whatever but during an actual lobby there would just be more customization years years is insane to me oh, but it does make said. sense if we read one of the next questions that was asked um uh Krasul bear asks are there any plans to further bridge the survivor friends and solo survivor gap by providing solo players with more information about their allies. Uh, there should be. 
we now had a HUD system where solo players can kind of know what their teammates are doing a little bit. Yep. And that would be great, but I, I do think this should be expanded. And yep. obviously seeing your teammates' perks and other stuff like that, that would be amazing, right? Yep. So are, are there further plans to bridge the survivor fans with solo? Which I think is an enormous gap right now. Agreed. They say, we always monitor the difference between survivor friends, solo, uh, survivor friends and solo. But this is strange because they don't tell us what it is. They don't tell us if if there's any major difference. Well, they say they monitor it and they don't. I, I know what he's saying, but they don't have to tell us because when I play killer, I can usually tell pretty quickly that it's a swift. And that's not like, oh, they're being toxic, blah, 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 insert DBD trigger word here. No, just the way they're playing or coordinating together, helping each other out. Now, every once in a while, you'll get a diamond in a rough where all four gamers are solo queue, but everyone just synergizes well. I've had that experience playing Survivor. It does happen, but you can tell pretty quickly who's a Swift and who's solo. And more often than not, the Swift will perform extremely well of course unless it's just friends you know goofing around not every swift is comp seal team six as people like to call them uh you gotta remember the actual pay to win uh should be high in licensed dlcs but it takes so goddamn long to unlock everything else where they cut the price for shards and how which is nice but so ridiculous for a pay uh for a pay for base game game they i they have made the blood webs better what was it last year or this past year whenever they updated the blood webs it's a lot easier to unlock perks across the board now but with that being said how many survivors are in this game now and how many because it must be close to 30 each right give or take like starting from scratch yeah that still takes a really long time to fully unlock all these or even if you buy the dlcs how long it takes to fully upgrade them or sorry i fully unlock them uh, the biggest difference between Swift and Solo Q is at least the Swift knows if the rest of the team is going absolutely 39 survivors. Don't say anything else. So we have to, we're led to assume that there's not a great difference, even though subjectively it feels like playing solo is awful. Our current stance is that lack of information. It is not the crux of the matter. Uh, it's not the crux of the problem, but really? rather that friends work together by nature and so survivors don't as much. Oh, so what do you think about this? This to me is is insane. You should see the replies yeah. to this and look at the amount of downvotes. Yeah. Like, this is insane. Of course, if you play with strangers, you are less likely to help them because you don't know what they have. You don't know what they want to do. You don't know what they're prepared to do. You don't know if they have any perk to get a second chance. So I do think that this question was answered poorly. I, I generally don't understand what they were going for here it's almost like they're implying that solo players are just kind of lone wolves and oh. they just don't want to help each other uh, when i honestly think that most people would if they knew what was going on i so i i agree and disagree i i do think in the the majority of people if they had information to help each other out they would absolutely but I be there are a lot of people and when I used to post regular TikToks of DBD I used to encounter a lot of these people in the comments and stuff like that there are people who play Dead by Daylight Survivor who unironically genuinely treat it like a single player game and I remember a TikTok where a teammate solo queue dragged the killer to me and then left me to be you know sacrifice essentially they didn't understand why the full health teammate who brought the killer to me injured should go out of their way to help me their teammate the idea of helping your team was a foreign concept to them they genuinely didn't understand it so there are people who do think this game is a single player game even though you're on a team of four now for the Dead by Daylight devs to think that a lack of information for solo queue is not the problem is just banana bonkers to me. The amount of different ways people would be able to help their teammates more efficiently if they had more information. There's a reason why people are always like, oh, you're on comms, that's cheating. 
the game isn't designed for that yeah because they're able to communicate information so they're able to interact together better they're able to plan and strategize better and is why swifts are usually stronger than soul q this isn't rocket science uh, if you saw if you saw some of the replies many people seem to agree with the sentiment now that being said, it is true. Sometimes you play solo survivor and you find people that don't want anything to do with you. Uh, in fact, if anything goes wrong, they'll kill themselves on the hook immediately. Yeah. So someone asks, um, with bots taking over disconnected players, well, this was a welcome change, but players would rather dodge the DC penalty and just kill themselves on hook. Is there any plan to combat survivors killing themselves on the first hook deliberately? Now, I understand it's really difficult to hold the hand of survivors or any player to force them to do something but this is what the developer said i wish i had more to say on this topic but no we don't have any plans for this we hear your concern and recognize your frustration but we just don't have any reasonable solutions here sad but true i get it listen i get it i get it there, there's mm. nothing you can do to 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 force players not to do something they want to do but to to hear that they tell us that information is not important, so they don't give us something like this. I can, I can hear them getting worked up. <laughs> it's completely valid. It's totally warranted. But then they also tell us that if people kill themselves, well, you just can't help it. There's nothing we can do. There's we cannot have some kind of system that maybe if you try to kill yourself on hook, you do get replaced by a bot. We can find some kind of system for people to have some kind of bonus or encouragement if they don't kill themselves on hook. Mm -hmm. We don't have some kind of system to encourage good teamwork. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's just complete lack of ambition. Complete lack of ambition. And this is just making me reconsider what I'm going to do with my content moving forward because for the last few years, I've been very personally involved in trying to send mm -hmm. feedback from the community to the developers and making videos about issues uh, about the game. But some of these things are going to change. Uh, videos covering specific issues of the game that yep. are in the game right now or in a future PTB. I'm never making videos like this again. I am never making videos like this again. I'm, I've made quite a few over the years. The man is done. I feel like obviously Oz was like infinitely more involved than I ever was. So I'm not trying to compare like me to him in a one-to-one -one ratio by any way, shape or form but i completely understand like the frustration and annoyance and just feeling kind of like lost in what's the point anymore when it comes to doing stuff like that because I, I i used to always try to have like open conversations about things like that but you see like people on twitter there's no there's no conversation really anymore it's just either you do a or you do b and then you just go off on insults tangents you're killer sided you're survivor sided you hate survivor fun you hate killer fun so what's the point what's the point as someone who like when i play like games for content i like to be able to have like discussions with people and that's kind of why i've been burnt out and stepping more and more back from dvd because it's just not possible anymore the reason i discovered this is this video was because on twitter today people were going off about like this odds video and talking about like oh good he won't be he won't be ruining dead by daylight anymore and i was like what are you talking about this man always tries to like over analyze and give proper feedback for survivors because i know a lot of people know him for like his killer plays and you know his trapper plays and whatnot but the man tries to look at both sides the best he can and give genuine feedback and people who play they just want to be victims that's what i'm saying people are like survivor side and killer side no this game is victim side because everyone who plays it no matter what side they play just convinces themselves they're a victim i told again not one-to-one -one comparison at all but i completely understand his frustration addressing problematic perks or add-ons or or maps or anything like that uh, I, I'm going to stop. This does nothing. Most of the times when I make a video like this, it has no impact on the game. The developers do what they were going to do anyway, whatever mm -hmm. that might be. And every now and then they do something close to what I suggest in the video. And then for the next months or years, I have to hear from people in the community accusing me of getting a perk nerf. Or see that, that, And that's exactly what I'm talking about. They always blame him. I see it on Twitter and I'm like, I don't understand. Well, 
sorry i kind of do understand it because people like i said just want to be angry a lot of people don't they don't critically think they just come to everyone bad you ruined my fun bad you beat me game bad oh my god you got this perk nerfed that i enjoyed it must be Otz's fault Otz is ruining the, what are you talking about i saw a tweet this morning from someone i don't even know who it was but they just tweeted that they were sad that chucky got a nerf that was it they were just sad there was no criticism about like perks spot, nothing they were just sad that chucky got nerfed the responses were people just going at this person based off of assumptions they made up in their deluded little heads about who this person is as an individual IRL and just throwing insults at them accusing them of this and that just because they were sad that a killer they like to play got a little nerfy nerf this is why I don't I'll play DVD on Twitch now and then and I'll talk with my community because my community is 99.9% .9 cool. Who's that 0.1%? I'll never tell. Figure it out amongst yourselves. But other than that, I don't enjoy engaging in conversations like this anymore, which sucks. My, I, I love having, that's why a lot of my YouTube videos that I've been working towards over the last like month or two are for the most part discussion videos, because even if someone disagrees with me, I enjoy the discussion part, but there's no discussion anymore with Dead by Daylight. It's just anger, anger, insult, insult, attack, attack, assumption, assumption. There's nothing, there's nothing there anymore. There's nothing. So I like, again, not one-to-one -one comparison at all, but I understand his frustration of spending all this time making this kind of content and then just being attacked or criticized by, by things that he has no control over. It's crazy. Perhaps Dipsh asks him why people give up on first hook. Perhaps because players hate seeing the same meta perks killer state of the game. It's not like we like giving up in the first two minutes. Exactly. And like to echo off that comment, I don't enjoy being negative about DBD. Like I know I, I'm like kind of venting frustrations here. I've met a lot of awesome community members in DBD. I've met a lot of awesome content creators in dbd there are a lot of positive things that happened to me in my content creation career since i started playing db three and a half years ago but man even this morning when i was waking up and having my morning coffee and i saw that tweet about like chucky and stuff and i was reading through the comments all that negativity as like i was reading it i was like this isn't even about me i'm not involved with this at all and this, I'm feeling that same sort of exhaustion that led to me, led to the start of my break that I started taking in the summer. It's just negative, 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 negative. And it was affecting like my brain helmet. Like constantly. It's, it's such a shame. It is such a shame. Ugh. Ah, I know lots of people who do good things for the state health of the game, but uh, behavior should put like a statue or give 1 million euros to Otz. The fact that he still cares the game after all the shit he gets. Absolutely. Like I never, like if you disagree with maybe, you know, a perk he doesn't like a, a, a killer survivor he doesn't like, whatever, that's fine. Disagreements are fine. That's human nature. Usually the best conversations can come from a civil disagreement, but that just there's no there's no nuance for that there's no room for that it's just you're either with me or you're against me or getting a killer nerfed or doing something when i personally know that i have no such impact the people that like this video were mostly for the people that keep up with the game not so much and want to know what is strong and what is coming and for those people, I'm sorry, but this kind of videos, I'm just not making them. I will also yep. probably refrain from making more videos with proactive suggestions. Videos such as, oh, fix this. Oh, fix that. Oh, change this. Oh, this killer needs that. Uh, maybe I'll make one more of this and then I'll never do it again. Because this uh, ultimately, this would be for the community. Uh, I don't think the developers really have this 
drive this ambition to actually change in a reasonable time. I can't believe behavior bugged Huntress's hatches because Ots told him to. Yeah, Ots, why do you hate Huntress and why are you trying to get them to ruin her? God, you're such a entitled survivor main until you mention dead horror. Then you're a toxic killer main. Insert buzzword. Grr. I'm the things that are already in the game. Uh, now, uh, n covering new content, covering new killers that come every three months. Yeah, we'll always do that. We'll always be there for that. That's always fun. Yeah, new content. Uh, silly compilations of me screaming at people and funny things happening. Uh, those obviously I'll still make. Uh, tier lists and resources and guides and things for beginners. This is currently, I think, my favorite kind of content to make. This is the thing that I feel the best about doing. And I will continue to do this. In fact, look out for a bunch of updated tier lists coming soon. And challenges such as the 50 win series or other things like that. I think I'm also going to drop at least temporarily, at least uh, for the most part. It's just th this game oh, is not Omega. a good sport for this. Uh, as you uh, I'm not trying to undermine other content creators who videos or not, but it's said that Oz is just is more passionate about DVD than most of the devs. He's very passionate about, it, which is why I think it's a shame that people paint him to be like some sort of dbd villain and i genuinely don't understand it at all like i i've only ever talked to Ots a couple times and it was when the streamer bowl was happening we were chatting about like one or two the, i think it was like one or two times but the entire time he was just such a awesome great dude and when he was asking me about something he wasn't understanding he wasn't like rude he wasn't condescending nothing he was like hey fidget i'm not understanding this what's this about and i would explain it he goes oh okay that makes sense cool fidget thanks like great super great guy super approachable super nice everything but again i think people just have knee-jerk reactions to oh my because people well, let's be real for some reason it's fine to love a game it's fine to be passionate about a game but people unironically treat dead by daylight like it's life or death and it's really weird it's really weird everything is super personal and i don't get it I just... you guys know they changed the mmr recently which means that you're gonna go against more and more difficult opponents if you keep winning your games uh, and that would be fine, but every now and then I have just horrible experiences. Uh, just the other day, I was playing this match, and suddenly I found myself chasing this Jeff, mm -hmm. and I thought he was a god. Like, he was running me on tiles where, where, where none of my mind games were working, and I thought, okay, this is just the one who are in the team, that's insane. He then heals someone else really, really fast, but, you know, he had some healing perks, so maybe he was possible, I don't know, I didn't really raise an eyebrow there. And then, at the end of the game, I have him pinned against the edge of the map, and I see his blood and he's there and I hear the, 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 the exit get make noise and I go there and his blood just disappears into the ground. He just, he's just gone. That's, look at the face I, I <laughs> look at the face <laughs> I make when I realize that he just disappeared. Uh, he then teleported behind me and left with everybody else. Uh, he's a, a toxic killer who just got mad that he didn't get a 4k this is why odds is ruining dead by daily the atom just outplayed him wow wow wine dbd twitter in a nutshell and obviously it's uh you know it, it, it turned out it was a cheater no skill issue now this jeff was really stupid and he made it look really obvious but survivors don't have to be stupid. And killers, I guess, don't have to be stupid or make it obvious. You will go against lobbies more and more and more that are difficult, that send you to maps, that bring bring strong add-ons, strong killers, strong whatever. Mm -hmm. And you're never gonna know you're never gonna know if you literally got outplayed or if it was someone that is actually good at hiding their cheats. Mm -hmm. uh, I've also heard reports from people saying that they've been sniped more and more and that uh, ch cheaters have now a better stream sniping software. Uh, which would seem to be the case because Probably. the last few days I've been, I've been having more cheaters than usual and I don't think that there's suddenly more cheaters. I just think they're now better at finding particular streamers. Either that or... Well, it's also why the battle against like cheaters and hackers will never end because as their security stuff gets better, the hackers' tools will also get better. It's constantly improving on each side. That's why it's a never-ending battle and that's for any game. Just a very unlucky streak. But yeah, 
uh, whatever the case, I am I'm I'm gonna shy away from doing that kind of content and prevent myself from just being mad and frustrated. I will be playing other games, branching out to other stuff on top of doing my usual DVD videos. I'll be playing more and more other stuff. I, I recognize that when I play other games and I branch out to other things, I'm not as immediately knowledgeable and I'm often not as entertaining or as good at the game. Um, but I'll work on that. I'll try. To ah, so you're obviously never gonna see me say this, but let's go learn Fortnite together. Ninja Drills just came out. Let's go. Cowabunga, dude. What do you think, chat? Fidge and Ots Darva play Fortnite. We'll dominate. It'll be the best content ever produced. To make content that is compelling to watch for people that are familiar with the game or not. And that's what I that, that's what I'm up to. That's what I'm gonna plan for the next few god knows how long how long. But yeah. Uh overall, pretty disappointed. I can't blame him. I can't say I blame him. Yeah, I, I completely understand all of Ots' frustrations there. Um Obviously, he's way more involved and in depth than I ever was, but uh, I feel like the the sentiments were the same. It's kind of why I stepped back from DBD, besides maybe playing it here and there on stream. And it's why, again, this is the this video is the outlier. It's why I'm not really doing DBD content on YouTube anymore, and all my discussion videos are back to my variety roots, talking about whatever I feel like because that's what I enjoy. And I love having conversations with people, even if you disagree. Let me know what you think in the comments down below about all this nonsense. A uh, huge thank you to Oz Darver for that original video. I completely agree with you on pretty much everything. And thanks for watching.